on the previous episode of Comedic Tales. So Seth decided that he was going to throw this party and this celebration for the kingdom. And he decided to invite his brother like, come on, bro, come on over here. I got a little party, you know, in your honor to celebrate you. So I decided to go to the party. So they having this little party. Everybody's having fun. Let's go ahead and play this little game. So Seth brought out this coffin. Like whoever can fit inside this coffin, I'm going to give it to you as a gift. Now with the god of Sargon, Set becomes the new pharaoh and or king of the ancient Nile Valley. Now in the previous section or part number one, we had the goddess I set now pregnant through immaculate conception with the god Heru. Okay, so we have our uncle Tahuti sliding in once again to warn our set of the dangers of Set in her being pregnant. Uncle Tahuti warns the goddess I set that she needs to leave, go hide out in the marshes in which he will send her some type of protection until the god Heru is born. In which the god Tahuti now links her with some form of protection, which are actually scorpions, seven scorpions to be exact. This is a part of you guys' homework for this week. Go look up the number seven and ask for protection. I'll put the outline here so you guys can research it outside of this video. And these seven scorpions are sworn to protect the goddess I set while she is pregnant with Heru. Now, remember in part number one, once I saw her had passed away, that the goddess I set had actually cut off her hair. That's where we get the idea of a so-called hag. So the goddess I set disguised herself as an old woman and or you could say a beggar. Now, on her journey, I set became tired, right? She walking out to find this marshland in which Tahuti told her to hide from the god set so that he wouldn't find out that she was actually pregnant, which with her roof who will become the new king of the ancient Nile Valley. Now on her way, I said becomes tired. So she decides to knock on the door of this particular rich lady, her name was Usur, to ask for food and water. Now the goddess I said was actually traveling with these so-called seven scorpions that the god Tahuti gave her to protect her on her way to these marsh lands. So this particular rich lady, she opens up the door like, Okay, uh, who are you? She looks down at the scorpions and she slams the door inside of Aset's face. Now, those seven scorpions that the god Tahuti sent with Aset to protect her, they became mad. Like, what, what, who is this? Who she thinks she is to do this to the goddess Aset? So the scorpions become enraged, but the goddess Aset, in her humble nature, she decided to keep on walking. She ended up at the door of this poor fisher girl who actually allowed for Aset to come in, gave her food, gave her water, and a place to stay. Meanwhile, while the goddess Aset is resting, those seven Scorpios? Well, not Scorpios, baby. I'm a Scorpio, but they weren't Scorpios. They were Scorpions. <laughs> but these seven Scorpions were hot and heated, okay? They were not about to forget what this little rich old lady, well, she wasn't an old lady, but they weren't about to forget what this rich lady did to the goddess I said. So what they did was they came up with a plan. The seven Scorpios kind of communicated with each other and they had one leader. The Scorpio leader's name was Teffin, okay? So the Scorpios decided to all come together they put all of their power into their leader called Teffin, the scorpion. He went back to this rich woman's house, snuck inside of her house, and he bit her child. So the boy of the rich lady ends up getting sick. It's scandalous, right? Just like the stories in the Bible, if y'all remember my Bible series. <laughs> y'all what happened in this garden, okay? This is serpent coming up through the garden, right? He looking at Adam like, he ain't got nothing on me. Nothing. I already told y'all how Satan dis straight up disrespected Adam in front of his face and Adam didn't do nothing. Looking at him, compared to me, oh, he average at best. Yeah, he ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> he see Eve, she all looking all good. Tap her on the back. Hey, young girl, how you doing? Oh, who are you? Don't worry about who I am. Why you don't come over here and hang out with me for a little bit? <laughs> I don't think... I don't think we can do that. What? Your daddy said that? Adam like this. Well, it does sound kind of fun. Uh, maybe I should come with you, Adam. What do you think, Adam? Adam like, I'm just gonna follow behind her. If something go wrong, I'm just gonna blame her for it, but don't tell nobody. <laughs> so 
So the Scorpio bites the child and the boy ends up getting sick. So the rich lady ends up seeing that her son is sick. She runs into the town looking for help. Everybody hear her screaming, asking for help, but nobody is actually willing to help her. Meanwhile, Miss Humble, the goddess I said, notices the lady screaming and asking for help, right? So she walks up on the lady and she asks the lady what is going on. The lady lets her know that her son is now sick and she can't figure out what is going on with her son. Now, remember in part number one, the goddess I said is already a master magician. Now, the goddess I said actually took pity on this uh this lady as well as her child. So what I said did was she called out all the names of the seven scorpions. This is part of your homework assignment. What does the seven names, the seven spirits, represent inside of the bible if you already know the story make sure you put it down in the comment because somewhere in the bible they call out these seven spirits inside of the bible as well so the goddess i said calls the name of each of the seven scorpions and she calls out their name in which they had to release the poison from this little boy's body now seeing her son become healed through the goddess i said calling out those seven spirits this particular rich lady she rejoices she realized that she actually judged the goddess i set based off of how she looked and you know what they say don't judge a book off its cover because you could be actually entertaining angels right so this particular lady she celebrates she becomes excited she ends up giving her property over into the poor lady who actually invited i said into her house fed her and gave her somewhere to rest Fast forward, the goddess I said continues on her journey until she finds these so-called marshlands. I said stays there until she gives birth to the god Heru and or her son. She protects her son Heru from like scorpion bites, snake bites, etc. But as she stays out in these marshes, she runs out of food. So the goddess I said decides that she needs to leave the baby Heru in the marshes so that she could go find additional food and resources. Now, somehow within this story, the god said who now rules the ancient Nile Valley hears about the god Heru being born. Now, this is very similar to the story that we hear in the Bible about the so-called king sending those people out to do what to baby Jesus. Okay, this is why people be comparing the two stories. However, it don't you don't even have to prepare it. I mean, compare the two. Anyhow, the God said finds out that Heru has been born. While I said it's gone to find additional resources and or food, the God said is actually on a search out for I said in Heru. So he ends up actually finding Heru. He turns into a snake and he bites baby Heru. Now, unlike the previous time when the goddess I said was actually healing Heru from snake bites, crocodile bites, this particular time she couldn't actually heal Heru. So the goddess I said decides to call out to the god. Tahuti, once again, Uncle Tahuti comes in, rescuing the day. As she hears I said crying out to the gods, he comes to her rescue and let her know that the whole world will be in complete darkness until they find out some type of way to heal baby Heru from this poison. This is a homework assignment concerning astrology. What happens when something falls in a particular season? and it becomes darker for long periods of time. Now, the God Tahuti is all about thoughts, mentality, communication, intellect. Now, the God Tahuti actually comes up with the process of using the name, the God Ra, the secret name of the God Ra, to exercise all of this poison out of baby Heru. Once all of the poison is out of baby Heru, he is alive, he is living, he is much well, and all of the people of this so-called marshland start to celebrate. Now, this is the time in this same season in which the sun didn't rise. That's your homework. Look it up. Hopefully, you put it down in the comments if you know exactly what I'm talking about as far as celebrations and stuff throughout the year, the count of the year, and comedic spirituality. Now, even though baby Heru was actually healed at this point, the goddess I said decided that she was going to still hide out until baby Heru become of age and was actually able to fight the god set and become the new ruler of the ancient Nile Valley. At this point, Baby Heru has become a young man and he is ready to revenge the death of his father, the god Asar, and take on his uncle, the god Set, to become the new pharaoh of the ancient Nile Valley. And of course, take his rightful place as the king. This is where the battle of the god Heru versus his uncle Set comes in. However, I'm going to leave that for part number three and I'll see you guys next Wednesday.